Have you always wanted to own your own business by becoming a licensed cosmetologist? If so, now is the time to enroll at Unlimited Cosmetology School, LLC, located at 102 Broad Street in Hattiesburg. That's right, learn how to become a professional cosmetologist by acquiring 1,500 clock hours in 12 or 16 months. Now is the time for open enrollment. If you're interested, contact Lisa Daniels by calling 601-336-7256 or 601-408-2650. Thank you so much for joining us today on Lifting You Higher TV Ministries. This is a blessing. I look forward to this every Sunday. And I just thank all of you for calling me, for talking with me, for emailing me, for texting me, and telling me how much you're being blessed by the program. That's the purpose of it. We want to be a blessing to the people. When we go on TV each Sunday, we want you to get a word. We want you to be blessed. We want you to be encouraged. And if you're not saved, we want you to get saved. That's our top priority. It's for those that watch this program and you're not saved, this is a good time for you to get saved. And what's the best time for a person to get saved? All the time. So that's why I said if you're watching today or if you're praying for a loved one who's not saved, tell them to turn the TV on and watch today because we have a message message that I think is going to bless the people today. In fact, today I'm going to be talking about a subject about prayer. We've done prayer on this program so many times before, but I tell you what, we can't talk about prayer too much and we can't pray too much. So the topic for today is this, prayer still works. It still works. It worked when Jesus walked this earth. It worked for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It worked for the three Hebrew boys. It worked for Daniel in the lion's den. It has worked for so many people in the past and it is still working today. But in order for prayer to work, you have to work prayer. Now, what do I mean about that? If you want God to do something for you, then you have to pray. A lot of times I hear people say, you know, I thought about it and I, and I was wondering about it and I talked about it. Well, while you're wondering and you are thinking and you are talking, start praying. Because when you pray, things happen. When you pray, God changes things. When you pray, you get a peace that you can't get from anybody else and in any other way. So I encourage you, before I go into the topic today, to start discussing this, learn to pray. Men are always to pray and not faint. So my topic is coming from Acts 16, 25 through 26 from the King James Version of the Bible. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, if you're in in the room with somebody, say immediately, all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. Now, this is, this is a very broad topic, and I know I can't talk about all of the details, but I'm going to try to give you some of the details and some of the background of what happened, the reason why Paul and Silas were thrown in jail. Well, first of all, Paul was traveling from place to place preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, which was not a popular thing to do because the people did not receive it. And so they were in, they were on their way to one place, but Paul in a vision heard a man say, come on over to Macedonia. We need you over there. So Paul and Silas set out to go to Macedonia. When they get over there, they keep on to a little prominent town, uh, the biggest city, I guess, in Macedonia, which was called Philippi. And when they get over to Philippi, they are over there for a few days and there's a prayer meeting going on down by the river and Paul and Silas attend the prayer meeting and they go over by where the women are. They meet one woman over there by the name of Lydia and she was the seller of purple and she was a wealthy woman. She was a, she, she sold products. And so she was a woman who feared God. 
she heard this gospel that they were preaching and she received that gospel. See, some people hear the gospel and they don't receive. Others hear it and they are ready to receive because they already feel God, fear God. So she received the gospel. After she received the gospel, she said, she got baptized and she said, I want you guys to come on over to my house and stay. So she encouraged them to come over to where her family was to stay with them. So they go over there and they stay. So they are continuing to go to this prayer meeting. They are continuing to preach the gospel. They are continuing to pray. So this little girl fo follows them around. And this little girl is a psychic. She's a fortune teller. And these men have this little girl working for them to make a living. And so after the little girl kept following them around, Paul said enough is enough. So he cast the, the spirit out of the little girl. When he cast the spirit out of her, she went back and told the people that she was working for, the men that she was working for, these men are going around, they are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they are trying to change people, people's minds. They are stirring up things. And so the people who were making the money off the little girl got very upset. You see, when the enemy has you doing something and you decide to stop and do the right thing, he gets upset. And so they had the police to drag them into the, the, the square, the town square. Then they had the police threw them in jail. But before they threw them in jail, they had them stripped from their clothes and beaten until they turned another color, blue and purple. And so this was a sad situation if you look at it in the natural. But if you look at it in the spiritual, it wasn't so bad. Because these were two sold out men. They were thrown in jail and they were told, the, they told the jailer, make sure you, you keep them tied down. Now put their feet in stock and make sure they can't get out of there. And that's ex exactly what the jailer did. The jail was dirty. It was smelly. It was wet. It was like a dungeon hole. They didn't throw a pity party, though, when they were thrown in jail. You know, if somebody throw you in jail, you're trying to do something right. The average person is going to say, I was doing this for Jesus Christ. And then they threw me in jail. This is not fair. If God is who he says he is, why did he allow us to get thrown in jail? No, they didn't take that kind. Of, they didn't cop that kind of attitude. You know what they did? They went in there and they said, you know what? We're going to praise God. We're going to thank God. We're going to sing because we were able to spread the gospel. We were able to set that little girl free who was, um, who had this spirit in her, and we, we counted all joy to be able to suffer for Christ's sake. Now, that's a sold-out Christian. We complain about little things we go through, people talking about us because we are saved, people ostracizing us. That's nothing compared to what these people went through. These people were beaten unmercifully and thrown in jail, and they weren't on the, the top level. They weren't on the second level. They were at the bottom. You see, it's one thing to be thrown into a place, but you get decent treatments, fair treatments. Nobody else probably were in stocks and chains except them. And so they continue to sing and praise God. Let me tell you something. If you're watching this program, if you want to get set free when you are going through, you start praising God. You start reading your word and you start praying and watch God change things. The reason the enemy hates praise and worship so bad is because I'm told that he was a praise worshiper in heaven and he knows the magnitude and the value of praise and he gets upset when folk praise when he's thrown his hardest target and they still standing there saying lord i thank you lord i love you lord i appreciate you this is ministering to somebody right now you feel like you at the bottom just like they were they were on the bottom floor but god wants some bottom out people to praise him today it's easy to praise God when everything is going well, when all of your bills are paid, when everybody is well, when you don't worry, you don't have any sickness in your body. But what about when the enemy come knocking on your door, when you are going through trials, when you're going through tests, when you didn't do anything wrong, but you are suffering for righteousness sake? Are you still going to say, Lord, I thank you? Are you still going to praise God? Are you still going to tell people that God is good? Despite what I'm going through, I still trust God. I still love God because he is a loving, kind, sovereign God. 
They didn't even talk about the people who had them thrown in jail. And I'm sure the prisoners were saying, what is wrong with these crazy men? They've been thrown in jail because they're worshiping their God. They have them in stocks and chains, and they're over there singing praises and praying to their God. But you know what? Paul and Silas didn't let that phase them because they knew that the God that put them in there was going to bring them out. And another thing I want you to understand, they were not thrown in jail for their sakes. They were put there so that the jailer and his family could get saved. A lot of things you're going through, it's not because of something that you're going through for yourself. You're going through because when you come out, you're going to be able to tell someone else, God delivered me, he can deliver you. And, and count it all joy. When things are happening and you don't understand, say, so Lord, I don't understand you, but I still trust you. We can't ever get to a point where we say, God, I thought you were going to do this and I thought you were going to do it. Who are we to question God? Because he said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but he delivers them out of them all. Whatever you are going through, I want you to know God is going to deliver you. If you are praying for a sick loved one today, and many of you are, and it seems like they are not getting any better, I want to admonish you today to don't stop praying. You keep praying because you know what? The very next prayer that you pray could be the one that loose them and let them go free. And so uh, they didn't complain. Um, they kept a good attitude. An attitude, a good attitude, sets the atmosphere for miracles. A good attitude sets the atmosphere for miracles. You see, you're either a thermostat or you're a thermometer. A thermostat sets the temperature. It gauges, it sets the temperature. A thermometer checks the temperature. Now, are you trying to check to find out why this happened, why that happened? Or are you setting the atmosphere up for praise and worship and positive words, not complaining, not saying, you know, I don't deserve this or how long am I going to stay here? We give God praise. You see, <laughs> they could lock their feet down, but they couldn't lock their mouth down. If you can let the praise come out of your mouth, your feet will come unloose. Whatever you're going through, if you're in bondage of anything today, if people talking about you, if it seems like you're on lockdown, nothing is going right for you, bam, 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 one thing after the other, don't stop praising God because as you praise him, everything else is going to be loose and you're going to be set free. And one day you're going to be able to look back and say, you know what? I thought I couldn't make it through that. It was so hard. It looked like God was, was not going to ever show up. But he showed up right on time. I'm telling you because I've gone through some things and I'm saying, Lord, how long? Lord, I know if, if you want to do this, you can do this. And I've even said this, people. I've said, Lord, if I were in your place and you were in my place and you asked me to help you, I would help you. Now, why won't you help me? But you know what? He knows all about me. He knows the desires of my heart. He knows that I love him. He knows that I trust him. He knows that I'm not going to give up. So you might feel like, you know, you're going through something right now. It might be on your job. It might be in your home. It might be in your marriage. It might be with your children. I don't know what you're going through right now, but if God be for you, who can be against you because suddenly he can move on your behalf and change things overnight. You can go to bed one night feeling one way and something going on over here and over there and get up the next day and everything has been fixed. Because when, when the jail doors came open, the earthquake came suddenly. They weren't waiting there saying, wonder how long we're going to be here, when are we coming out? But you know what? They stayed right there. They praise God. And the amazing thing is when the doors were open, they didn't run. And none of the soldiers, none of the prisoners, rather, ran out of the jail. They stayed right there because this is what I imagine they were saying. You know what? We need to get to know these guys because if they serve this kind of God that can open the jail door, the prison door, and we are still here. We, we, we want to get to know that guy because we, we want to be saved too. They ran toward Paul and Silas instead of running out of the door. And the poor jailer, he said, man, this is it for me. 
all these doors have swung open and all these so all these I keep saying soldiers, all these prisoners are probably gone. And Paul said, uh-uh, don't do yourself any harm. They are all still here. And they were all still there. And we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to tell you what happened after everybody was free. We'll be right back. Hannah is available for ministry and speaking engagements for conferences, revivals, and other church events. She is also available for graduation ceremonies and Black History Month events. Email Hannah Hopkins at AOL.com or call 601-296-7693. You can also become a partner or sponsor of the show. Make your donation by logging on to Hannah Hopkins at AOL.com or sending your donation to P.O. Box 17405, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, 39404. And so we're talking about Paul and Silas and when they were in jail and how they were loosed at midnight and how God hears a midnight cry. You know, lots of time we're going through and we feel like, God, I can't take this anymore. This is too big for me. I've been going through this for too long. God, I need a breakthrough. Well, if you keep standing and you keep confessing and you keep living right. Now, there are some prerequisites for you getting a sudden breakthrough. You've got to be living right. Paul and Silas were totally sold out to Christ. You know, they said in, their, in, in, in the word, you know, they said, we counted joy to be able to suffer for Christ. So if you are willing to do what he tells you to do, you operate under his um, laws and his rules and his regulations. When you're in trouble, he'll come to your rescue. You'll even feel more like you're justified when you pray, when you're living right. When you're not living right and you pray, you're saying, well, maybe the Lord won't answer me because I've not been doing this and I've not been doing that. But let me tell you something. The Lord loves those that obey him, those that walk upright before him, those that say yes to his will and to his way. Those are the people that the Lord really loves. So I want you to know one thing. If you are walking it right before the Lord, if you believe the word of the Lord, if you have been standing and you have been waiting, and sometimes you got to mix some fasting with that prayer. And that's a sacrifice because very few people, I really, it's hard sometimes for me to fast, but if I make up my mind, I want to fast. If you fast, you last. If you don't, you won't. If you, if you ask him to give you the strength, he'll give you the strength to go through to get what you're believing him for. for. We're talking about people that are sold out and people that are not sold out. People that are sold out have committed their lives totally to the work of the Lord. They have given everything. They said, Lord, I'm going to put it all on the altar. My mind, my body, my soul, my spirit, it all belongs to you. When people are not sold out and they're going through, Lord, how long? Lord, what did I do? Lord, how can I continue to make it going through what I'm going through? But when you really, really, really love the Lord, you will say, you know, there's a song we used to sing. I love the Lord. He heard my cry and pitied every groan. Long as I live while trouble rise, I'll hasten to his throne. That's what sold out people would say. Have you ever wondered what songs that they were singing in a midnight hour? I'm sure they are not the songs that we're singing now, but they could have been on the same order as something like, um, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. In other words, I've got a light. I'm living for Christ, so I'm going to let my light shine. Everywhere I go, even in prison, I'm going to let my little light shine. They could have been singing a hallelujah chorus. I'm told that in, in heaven they are singing a song, and the title of song is hallelujah. And hallelujah is the highest praise. I don't know what they were singing, but I know one thing. Whatever they were doing, it was working for them because they were working for Christ. So if you work for Christ, his, his promises will work for you. Now, you got to remember something. Paul was not always saved. Paul was a serial killer. Paul went around killing people and, and persecuting people who served Christ. In fact, when he got saved, he was on his way to Damascus to persecute the Christians. He falls from the donkey. He, he loses his eyesight. Then he surrenders, Lord, what must I do to be saved? You see, sometimes we get in a place where we can't have do anything else but say, Lord, I need you. Lord, what do you want me to do? And he will step in right in the nick of time, and he will do something for you. He will turn things around in your, on your behalf. 
you can't judge people by what they are doing right now. Because see, when Paul first got saved, folk were afraid of him. Isn't that the man that's been killing folk? Isn't that the man that's been having people put in jail? They didn't trust him. But when God comes in, he makes you a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things have become new. Some of the folk that you're looking at now and you are saying they'll never change. I'm tired of praying for them. I, I've done everything I know to do. God says, not so. You keep praying for them and you keep confessing them. You got to see them in the future. And when you see them in the future, they're going to look better. They're going to be acting better. They're going to be talking better. They're going to be walking better. Because that's what Jesus did for you and he did it for me. He saw us in the future and we were better and we are better. So give them the benefit of the doubt. Love on them. Speak kind words to them. Tell them that Jesus is a, a savior and he is a forgiver. And he is, he'll do, he's a promise keeper. If he promised that he's going to do something, he will do it. I've had people that promise me things and then tell me, oh, I forgot about it. I'm saying, how could you forget about it? But if Jesus says that he's going to do something, he's going to keep his word because he honors his word above his name. One more thing. If you are praying and if you are believing and things are getting worse, that's a good sign that things are about to change. Because they say the darkest hour is just before day. So when things are getting worse and things just keep happening one after the other, one after the other, Something was going on in my family today, and I got this phone call, and I saw, I said, Lord, not again, Lord. And I just began to pray, and the Holy Spirit began to speak to me and said, I've given you power. You pray for this person. Don't you know God is bigger than what they are going to go through, what they are facing? Got a phone call a few minutes later. They say everything is all right. You have to take your authority and use the authority that God has given you. He said, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all of the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You see, when we stop running from the devil and start running toward him like David did, David didn't run from Goliath. David ran toward Goliath because David had a relationship with him. And he told him, he said, I'm going to I'm going to take you out today. And he walked up and took his own weapon and cut his head off because he had a relationship with God. David knew how to pray. David, if that wasn't his first rodeo, he had already done some other things and he knew God. He trusted God and God didn't let him down before. He said if he did it once, he will do it again. Prayer still works. And I want to talk to women right now. Women. Let's start praying. Let's pray more than we've ever prayed before. You know, there's something about women when we pray. It's different when, when men pray. We are persistent when we pray. We don't give up when we pray. We don't take our eyes off of what we're believing for. No reflection on you men. But women just know how to stand until they get a breakthrough. So women, start praying. Pray for your home. Pray for your children. Pray for your marriage. Pray for your church. Pray on your job. Pray in your car. Pray when you're cooking in the kitchen. Pray all the every little chance you, you get. You pray more because the, the prayer of the righteous availeth much. And what would happen? And I mean, God answers everybody's prayers. He answers men, women, boys and girls prayers because that's what Jehoshaphat said. He said he called a prayer meeting for everybody. And he said, y'all come on and pray because the enemy is coming against us. But we're going to have a prayer meeting. And when they had that prayer meeting, they got a word that said, you don't need to fight in this battle. All you need to do is just pray. I pray, sing, send your singers out, put them on the front line and let them sing. Praise God. But what I wanted to say to you is this. What would happen if every Sunday, whatever church you go to, before you come into the sanctuary, you had to go by way of the prayer room. You had to get out on your knees and you had to pray and you had to repent and you had to ask the Lord, Lord, come into the service and have your way today. Think about how everybody that came to church had to do that. Not just the prayer warriors. Think about the miracles that we would see. Think about the prayers that we would get answered. Think about the unity we would have. You see, when we pray together, we grow together. 
And the, the word said in Psalms 133, when men come together in unity, he said there, I will command a blessing up on them. And when you meet people and you greet people on Sunday, when you go to church, ask them this, say, how can I pray for you today? What do you believe in God for? God honors that. And I guarantee you, 90% of them will say, I need you to pray for this, or I need you to pray for that. This is a good time for the saints to come together in unity, believing for the same thing until they get their prayers answered. Prayer was the foundation of the early church. When the church was organized on the day of Pentecost, prayer was the foundation. They were all in the upper room on one accord, praying for the same thing, believing for the same thing, waiting for the promise to come. And the scripture says, suddenly a sound like a mighty rushing wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw tongues like flames of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Prayer was the key to the promise. Now, I'm gonna finish this at a later date, but before I go off today, I wanna take a minute to say, if you need prayer, if you have been praying and nothing has transpired, feel free to call the prayer line today. We wanna pray with you. We, sometimes it just takes somebody else standing with you in order for you to believe for your faith to be elevated, for you to receive what you're believing for. And also, I want to thank all of my partners for all of your donations that you're sending in. You are the one that's keeping this program on the air. I want to thank all of my, my financial partners, my prayer partners. I want to thank my prayer warriors who pray for me every week. We pray on the phone together. You are lifting me up. God is answering our prayers. He's opening doors for us. We're getting more engagements. We're going everywhere, preaching the gospel, not about me, but all about him because he has called me, anointed me, and appointed me to go forth and do the work that he has called me to do, and he'll do the same thing for you. I just thank God for each and every one of you because you are the reason that I'm doing what I'm doing. And I want you to continue to pray for me, that God will continue to give me the holy boldness that I need to stand before people without doubt and without wrath and not in fear and tell people the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And this has just been a blessing for you to watch this program today. Now, if you need help, call us on the prayer line. If you need salvation, call us on the prayer line. And until this time next week, I am Hannah Hopkins with Lifting You High, your TV minister saying, you be blessed. Hannah is available for ministry and speaking engagements for conferences, revivals, and other church events. She is also available for graduation ceremonies and Black History Month events. Email hannahopkins at aol.com or call 601-296-7693.